the first thing to do is install the brackets for our CPU cooler. Because we're installing this on an AM5 motherboard, the first thing we need to do is remove the stock clips that are each held on with two screws. And then when the screw is removed, these clips should simply lift off. With our CPU cooler, we get these brackets, and you'll notice on the brackets there is a little arrow pointing towards the CPU, making sure we install these the correct way round. And then we can secure the brackets with the four screws we've just removed. If you're installing the bracket on an Intel motherboard, you are going to need to use the supplied backplate. And for LGA 1700, you're going to want to make sure the clips are all pulled to the outer setting. For LGA 1200, push them all in towards the middle. And then it's just a matter of lining the backplate up with the back of the motherboard. And then pushing into place. Then we've got one of these little spacers to go onto each corner. So moving on to installing our AIO, and Leon, they have really simplified this by pre-installing the fans to the radiator, which is an absolutely brilliant idea. It's going to save us a little bit of work. In terms of connecting everything up, both the fans only have one cable coming from them. We've got a four pin PWM connector and also an ARGB connector here. And we're actually going to plug both of these cables into a digital cable coming from our pump. If you prefer, you can of course plug the PWM connector into your CPU fan header on the motherboard. Um, but the preferred option is actually to allow you Leon Lee's L Connect to control everything by plugging directly into the pump. So we take a look at the cables coming from the pump. We've got one cable plugged in already and two additional connectors. The one cable is a four pin PWM connector and that's going to go into the pump header on our motherboard. So looking at the pump itself, as I've mentioned, there's two additional cables to plug in. We've got this USB type C cable here and it's just simply going to push into here. On the other end, we've got this USB cable, which is going to go into USB 2.0 header on our motherboard, allowing Leon Lee's L Connect to control the I.O. Then we've got this other cable to plug in here. And coming from it, we've got two connectors. Um, one is for the ARGB connector on our fans. The other is for the 4-pin PWM cable. So they're simply going to go into here. And then we've got this SATA cable. And it's just simply a matter of plugging this into the SATA cable coming from our power supply. So I think installing the I.O. is going to be a little bit easier with fewer cables connected to it. So I'm just going to temporarily unplug these cables. So because our case is a removable top, we're going to be able to install it to the radiator outside of the case. So I'm just going to center it in the middle. And then I can secure it into place using the included screws and washers. And then we can reattach the dust filter at the top. Just as we set the top panel into place, I'm going to pass the fan cables through the cutout to the back of the case and then lower the case down into place at the top. And then we can re-secure the top panel into place. So just before we install our CPU cooler, there's two different types of nuts. The ones with the four dots on it are for AM5 and LGA1200, whereas the plain ones without any dots are for AM4 and LGA 1700. Okay, so we can see our CPU cooler has thermal paste pre-applied, so we can remove the plastic protection from the back. And then we're gonna to want to line the CPU cooler up with the bracket we've already installed. And Lee and Lee do recommend having the tubes down at the bottom. And then we're gonna take the thumb screws with the four little dots on it, because we've got an AM5 motherboard here, and get one put on to each corner. Then it's just a matter of tightening each of the thumb screws up and turn. So next thing to do is get the four pin PWM cable coming from the pump plugged into the pump header at the top of the motherboard. And then I'm just gonna pass all the excess cable through to the back of the case. I'm also gonna pass the two additional cables we need to connect through from the back. And we'll get them plugged into the side of the AIO. And then again, we'll just route all the cables through to the back. At this stage, we can remove the plastic protection from the AIO. And we can then just tidy up the cables coming out of the pump. And if we want, there's a little Velcro strap that we can put on the cables to help organize them. We can then bring our USB cable coming from the pump through the cutout at the bottom. We're gonna line it up with the header and push into place and pull the excess cable through to the back. Then we just need to get the cables coming from the radiator plugged into the cables coming from the pump, so the four pin PWM connector and then the ARGB connector below. 
Last thing to do is get the SATA cable coming from the pump, plugged into the SATA cable coming from our power supply. So because I'm making this video well before launch, I've got a beta version of Lee and Lee's L Connect 3. By the time this video comes out, it'll just be the standard L Connect 3 that you can get from Lee and Lee's website that you're going to want to install. And you'll find a link to that in the description. So I'm going to go ahead and open the software up. So when we open the Inlees L Connect, we're first of all going to be in the system page. There's a few things we can customize. We can customize the screen itself and all our ARGB effects, or we can go in and control the fan and pump profile. So let's start here. You can see our screen is currently set to white and we've got rainbow on the size. I'll show you how to adjust all that in a minute, but let's start off with our fans. So you can see the fans on the radiator are currently running in the standard profile and around about 900 revs per minute. And you can see this is our fan curve here and the green line indicates where we are based on our current CPU temperature. We can't adjust it here, it's going to have to run off the CPU temperature and that does make perfect sense. So if I go ahead and select the quiet profile, you'll notice that our fan speeds are going to turn down. The fan curve has changed slightly. Um, and what we can do is make adjustments to the fans down here to whatever we want. So we want to run our fans at full speed, we can do that as well. You hear the fan noise will kick up in the background. Our fans are currently going to be running just over 1500 revs per minute. That is obviously going to be quite noisy and you're not going to really want to do that. If you do want to make your own custom fan curve, you can do that as well, dragging these points to wherever you want them and that will save it away. But I think what I'm going to do is just run off the standard fan profile until I've done the thermal testing. There is also the option to sync up with your motherboard if you have plugged the cables into your motherboard headers. Okay, the other thing we can adjust is our pump, and for the pump we've got two different options, fixed revs per minute and PWM. If we click on PWM it's going to give us a curve. I much prefer to just fix the speed of the pump itself. And you can see at the moment it's currently running around about um, 2250 revs per minute. We do have the option to pull this up as well, so we can pull it up to full speed, which is 3600 revs per minute, and I can hear the noise really kicking up in the background as I do that. Um, I think in terms of the testing, I'm probably just going to run it on the default profile for now, so we'll click on default, and I can hear the pump noise kicking down in the background, and at this level it's pretty much inaudible over the fan noise at the 3600 it's really quite noisy, so I think I'm just going to leave everything on the default profile. So let's head over and control the custom screen. So at the moment, as I've mentioned, the screen is set to white, so we have different options in the screen header. We can control the lighting around the outside of the screen, and we can also control the lighting on the fans all separately. So let's make a start with the lighting on the screen itself. So at the moment you can see it's currently set to rainbow, we can adjust that and we've got two different pages of lighting effects. So let's pick a different one, let's go for breathing. It's currently set to red and if you look at the AIO you'll now notice that the lighting on the side of it is changed over to a red breathing pattern. We've got a whole range of different effects, we'll click on Meteor here and you'll notice that as we select them they change on the AIO itself. I personally am just after a static white, so let's click on static. That will change it over to a static red. We click here, select white, and click here. And then you'll notice on the AIO itself, it is now a static white. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the fans next of all. You can see they're currently set to rainbow. Um, again, if we want to adjust them, we can do. We've got controls for speed and brightness here, and also direction. Let's see a different effect. Let's go for breathing. And again, if you want to change the color, you've got the option to do it here as well. Um, we have a whole range of different effects. Let's go for runway, and we've got our two colors here. You want to change those, easy enough to do just in here. Probably just going to go for a static color here. There's two ways I can select the color that I want through here. Or what I can do is actually sync it up with the screen LED, which probably does make sense. Uh, I've set that to a static white on either side. So if I click sync here, we can select the size of the AO that we've got. We've got a 280, and what you'll notice, the fans have now changed to white, syncing up with whatever we change the lighting on either side of the screen to. Okay, so now we come on to the exciting bit, the screen itself. So at the moment, you can see it is just set to a static white. 
Um, that's the background color. So if we click on the background color, we can change what we have it to. So at the moment it's a solid color. If I want to change that to a black, for example, select black, select here, and you'll notice that the background of the screen changes to a black. We can, of course, change it from a solid color to some sort of gradient, so there's a horizontal gradient, and we can pick the colors that we want that to be on. Vertical gradient or a radial gradient. We've got the options to flip it. We can add text over the top of this, so if we click on the text, we can choose what we're going to have, and this is where we're going to get our sensor panel. We can, of course, have things like the time, but if you want to display your system information, this is probably the best place to get it. So let's click on the slider sensor, and then we've got our different effects that we can choose. So I'm going to go and display all of these. So that's going to then display our system information on the AIO. At the moment, it's looping quite slowly. It's in 20 seconds, so I want to show you this. So let's pick three. And what you'll notice now is that it will work quite quickly through the different temperatures, changing every three seconds to just show us some different information. So I don't think that looks particularly great on the background of just a static color. There is lots of other effects that we've got here. So let's, for example, go with the time tunnel. You can see I think that looks much better on that background. We could try the Mandela. Again, it's, it's probably going to be difficult to see over the top of that one. What about the twist hole? That looks like quite a nice one. So let's go into the text here. Let's go for our slider sensor and select all the items and make it three seconds. So I think this definitely looks much better than just a solid color. We've got all our system information with a really cool background. If you want to have something more simple, for example, just the time, we can do that. And again, if you want to change the color of that, we can do that as well. So let's select white. Rather than having any standard background color, you can add an image or a video in. So let's go over to this. Um, by default, we've got the Leon Lee logo. Um, and again, with it in the background, I think this looks pretty cool, but there is other effects that we can add over the top of it. So let's pick the raining. And you'll notice then it we've got a rain effect over the top of the Leon Lee logo. We can also do things like fireworks. or you can add your own custom image or video. To add your video, just click on Add, and then you've got a choice of a screen recording, screen capture, or upload. And what's really good is it's standard MP4s or picture files that you can upload. So let's click here. I've added a few items into my pictures. So let's add just a cup my logo. What we're gonna to have to do here is select what we want appearing. So I'm just gonna select the whole screen, click here, and import. And then if you look at the I.O., it's now displaying my logo as an image. We can add video files, so let's try something different. I've got my um, intro here. We'll click on it. And how this works is it is going to play stuff in the background. You're only going to be able to select a certain part of the screen to display. So this is as wide as I can make it because obviously the AIO is a screen and I've recorded this in a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. So we can drag this to the middle of the screen and what we're going to have to do is click on play and then click on record here. It's going to make a recording of what is showing in the middle of the screen here. When it's finished, we have to click on stop and then if we click the tick here and import, it's going to import this screen recording to the AIO. So we take a look at the AIO now. My intro is now playing on the AIO. Not perfect because it is cutting the website address off because it didn't quite fit into the screen recording that I have and it's just going to play that in a loop. Now let's see can we upload a slightly bigger file so we'll try something different. 
I do have um, a video of me actually building a PC, so let's try and see can it open. It is quite a big file, it's a 4K video file, so it's gonna take a little bit of time. And again, I'm gonna to have to only be able to record in a square, so we'll drag that to the center of the screen. And the maximum that we're able to record is three minutes. Okay, so we'll start the video. And um, we'll get to the bit that I want to start recording at. So let's start here. Okay, and we'll call it here. That's about a minute. Um, and then we just need to click the tick button here and import. So there we go. If we look at the I.O. now, the video is playing of me actually building a PC. So I do think this is really cool, having up to three minutes of a normal video file and being able to use an MP4 without having to convert it is absolutely brilliant. But I think what I'm going to do now is just go for the standard Lian Lee logo with the raining effect.